Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video, we are taking the first look at the brand new Hobbywing F7 Micro Convertible <laughs> Flight Controller. That's right. Right here for the first time, you are about to see one of the best manufacturers on the market producing flight controllers and ESCs and stacks putting out the all new F7 convertible. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Uh, uh. All right, pilots, so Hobby Wing has been one of the most trusted manufacturers for a very long time. They make very, very reliable products. Their ESC and flight controllers are just fantastic. I've got a video on one of the stacks. If you wanna check that out, I'll put a link for you down in the video description. But today, we are here to talk about their newest product. It is the F7 Convertible. Why? I don't know. We're going to find out together. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what's going on. So this is called the X-Rotor Micro Convertible Flight Controller F7. What you got to do is slide the package open and oh, oh, oh my God. There it is in all of its glory just looking absolutely gorgeous. Let's go ahead and pop it out of here. It is kind of hard to get out, but if you put your finger in the little slot, boom, it pops right out and there you go. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to set that aside right there and then I want to see what else is inside of here because I know they're hiding some goodies from us yes sir there it is so you've got your bag of goodies huh look at that we got all kinds of stuff in there and then we've got our instructions and hobby wing flight controller f7 sticker and these instructions are quite entailed as always look at this this is if you don't know what you're doing all right, so diving into the bag of goodies, let's see what's in here. Boom. So you've got a, oh my God, look at the length of this connector. Holy macaroni. Look at the, I'll use the flight controller as reference. This should take you from the front to the back of your quad, no problem. Then you've got your short plugs, and what these are actually for is, this is to tie this flight controller to their existing ESCs that they sell. Then you've got some sort of testing port. Then you've got one if you need to make up your own connections, the ends are left open for you, can't beat it. And then you've got a complete set of extra grommets, which is super nice to see. Moving on to the meat and potatoes, Look at that flight controller, holy cow. And I'm gonna tell you what the convertible is because I already know. What it is, is it's unfortunately, I shouldn't say unfortunately, fortunately, unfortunately, it's something that we've seen before and where that is, is right here on this Fet Techie Tech Tech. Look at that. So that is the same kind of concept. What you'll do is you'll just take the ear and you snap it off. And what you're doing with that or why you would do that is to turn your 30 by 30 to a 20 by 20 convertible. So you'll basically be able to turn your 30 by 30 into a 20 by 20. You can't beat it. That's super awesome to have. Not new to the market. I think also the Flight One Lightning H7 also does it. Also got a video on that. I'll link that for you too. All right. So right on top, you've got two connectors. You've got one right here and you've got one right here. This connector right here is pretty customary. Most flight controllers have it. And what that's for is to hook up your plug and then you hook that up to your ESC just like that. And then boom, now everything is connected as far as current, battery, ground, motor ones through four, all that basic stuff that you need is boom and connected just like that. Now you've got another plug right over here and let me demonstrate. <laughs> Look at the size of that monkey. All right, so what that is, is you're going to plug in right here. Sorry, I'm excited about this. Watch this. I plug that in right there. Now watch and learn. Boom, you ready? Hold on. Where the hell is it? Boom. That's right. That's right, you're done. If you are, like me, DJI Pilot, you are connected. Boom, look at that. Now all I gotta do is wire up my motors, wire up my battery, and I'm off to the clouds just like that. You cannot beat that. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the back. If I flip it over, 
Oh, look at that. We've got a barcode right there sitting over our OSD. I'm going to peel that off. And I pro I mean, if it's yours, you know, if you want to peel it off, peel it off. I don't know. You don't have to. So on this side, we've got most of our components back here, and then we've got a nice row of pads. We've also got a nice row of pads right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to dive into the scope, and we're going to take a closer look at these. Let's see what's going on with these pads. Looking in the scope, this thing is gorgeous. It is loaded. It does make it a little bit hard to read some of the components because what did they do? They can formal coat it. And you'll notice on all Hobby Wing boards, they take the time to slap some conformal coating on there. That means that basic water and moisture and stuff usually doesn't affect you on these boards. But let's go ahead and dive in and let's take a look and see what we got. All right, so starting up at the top, you'll see here there's our micro USB connection. There's our boot button right there, pushy pushy. Then you've got some pads right here and these pads are gonna be for testing. So you wouldn't connect to any of these pads over here. So right here, we've got some LEDs. You can tell by the looks of them that they're two different colors. I think we've got a blue and a green. There's another LED right here, see that? All right, so right here, we've got our gyro right there. Right next to that, we've got our MCU right here. This is a ARM brand board with an STM32 F722. Very nice, very nice. We've got some basic resistors and capacitors and things like that. We've got our eight megahertz crystal. This is actually needed to run this microcontroller. And then down here at the bottom, we've got all of our pads. So let's go ahead and check those out. You've got a ground. You've got a plus 10 volts. Hey, hey, built in back. That means from this board, when you solder up to that, you are putting out 10 volts. And I know that they did that mostly for DJI, but you can use it for all sorts of stuff. Some of these VTXs, they need a minimum of 7 volts, but you're flight controller only has five volts. So if you're buying a board, be mindful that it has something like this on it. All right, so we've got our V out. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, that is your video out, all right? So when you connect your VTX, the yellow wire goes here. You've got UARTs right here. So you've got some transmit pads, transmit pad, transmit pad. You got a 3.3 volt, that's nice. Let's keep moving. So we've got a ground pad here. We've got a plus 5.2 volts. That is just going to be a 5 volt pad. Don't let that confuse you. You've got your RX1, your RX2. So if you're running something that requires a full UART, like a crossfire receiver, you can utilize right here. You can touch TX1 and RX1, and you'll have the complete UART ready to go. And that's going to be one of the benefits of an F7 flight controller. Not only will it run faster, you'll have more CPU power, you will also have more UARTs. All right, so moving on down the scale, you've got your RSSI when needed. You've got your CA2. What does that mean, Drain Man? What, what's a CA2? I'm going to tell you right now, but first, I want you to take a look at CA1. So that is where you connect your camera. And yes, you connect your camera one to camera one. You can put another camera on top, facing down, facing up, put one in the back, facing out the back, A, hey, and then you've got camera two. And right off this flight controller, nothing else needed, you can actually flick a switch from your transmitter and switch cameras in the flash of an eye. If you pilots are interested in that, I'll make a video, show you how to do it. All right, moving right along. We've got ourselves a 5-volt pad right here. We've got another 5-volt pad right here, and we've got a ground right here. So you've got plenty of pads, plenty of options right there, right on the top of the board. Now, hiding over here by our DJI connector, you've got your CTL pad. That is your camera control. So if you wanted to run camera control, and then right here on the left side, you've got your buzzer minus, buzzer plus, ready to rock and roll and you've got your hidden little arrow. All right, what do we got? I love having pads. I love when they give us a ton of, ton of pads, ton of, ton of options. Use them if you want to, use them if you don't. Whatever you want, it's up to you because you got them there. But if they don't put them, you can't use them. So it's nice to see as many as we can. All right, so moving right along, we've got our ground pad. We have got another 10 volt pad. God damn. All right, right next to that, we've got our LED strip. 
We've got our SCL, SDA, that is your communications if you're going to run a GPS. TX4, RX4, full UART, 5 volt pad, ground, channel 5, channel 6, what's that? Yeah, that is if you want to hook up motor 5, motor 6, very, very nice. Then you've got another full UART, RX3, TX3, and then we've got a ground and another 5 volt pad. Well done, I absolutely love it. All right, so right here we've got our OSD chip, all right? That's nice to see because if you are not running DJI, well, what are you going to do? You're going to run regular analog, and you've got a OSD chip right there. That is the full Betaflight OSD. All right, right over here we've got onboard flash. So you do not have a uh, SD card slot. You've got actual onboard flash. That right there will basically store your information from your black box if you want to do black box logging or anything like that. We've got a little barometer right here. That's nice. So if you want to get into altitude, altitude hold, return to home, things like that uh, with your GPS, it's nice to have that barometer on board. All right, right here I want to point out to you because I said I would, you've got your two switching reg circuits. So that's in here from this TVS diode all the way around here, all the way around this inductor, around these diodes, all this is going to be a regulator, switching regulator, and then right here, split down the middle. All right, so I wanna show you one last thing real quick. If we go ahead and we spin the board and we head over right here next to your onboard flash, you might notice that there's three little jumper pads real quick. Let me zoom you into them so you can see them. All right, so you've got three little pads right here. This one all the way to the left is going to be your RX5. The one in the middle is going to be your VTX switch. And the one all the way to the right is going to be your 3.3 volts. So if you want to use VTX switch where you can actually uh, flick a switch and shut off your VTX, maybe you're at a race and you want to power up and spin up your props and check some stuff or you're flying with some buddies and you don't want to knock them out of the sky, maybe you, cra maybe you crashed, you crashed and you don't want to burn up your VTX, boom. Flick the switch, your VTX goes off. What you'll need to do is you'll need to unsolder this resistor and then you'll jump the two pads together. If you jump the way that it is now, it is jumping the 3.3 directly over to the VTX switch. So what that means is that straight through voltage just happening right now. So your VTX will just be on all the time. So if you jump this over to RX5, then it will actually run off a switch. So be mindful that if you mess with this, your VTX is gonna stop working. The power to your VTX is gonna stop working. All right, pilots, just for fun, we're gonna take this little plug and we are gonna plug in our flight controller. Boom. Then I'm gonna take my power supply, and if you do not have a variable bench power supply, I've got a video on how to make your own. I'll, I'll, I'll put a link for you down in the video description, but what I'm going to do is, if you can see, I am powering this thing up. There you go. You can see the LEDs are on. Well, kind of hard to see in the scope, but this thing is connected on, powered up. I've got my multimeter in the right-hand corner. Check that out. And what I want to do is I just want to take my probes real quick, and I want to know how accurate are these switching regulators. <laughs> There you go. So you got 16.6 volts. That's what's coming out of my power supply right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this ground pad right here, and we're going to grab the 10 volt pad right next to it. And what do we got? 9.9. .9. That's pretty dang accurate. All right, on these 5 volt pads, instead of saying 5 volt, they, they went out of their way to write 5.2. So let's, boom, 5.1. Ah, got him. I'm just playing. It normally would say 4.9 or 5. I mean, my my uh, my multimeter may not be exactly accurate, but there you go. We check the, the switching volt regulators. We see that they're working. We see that they're accurate. We've got 5 volts. We've got 10 volts. Oh, let's go ahead. Just for and giggles, we will hit the 3.3. There it is right there. So I'm going to catch this ground right on the end, and then I'm going to catch the 3.3. 
And there you go, 3.3 right on the head. Very nice. All right, pilots, I am so excited about this new Hobby Wing flight controller. I cannot wait to build it. Let me know if you guys want to see me build this flight controller. Jump down in the comments and let me know. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are as excited about this as I am, and I will see you on the next one.